Hey guys, it's Shikemi or Love is it, the Farm Lady, and you are welcome back to another amazing, interesting, and educative video. So, guys, I know I've been MIA for so long, and I'm so sorry. I had a whole lot going on, and I'm back and better. So, please forgive me for being away for so long. Of course. I have a whole lot of content in store for you and I know that you don't want to miss out on that so stay with me stay tuned thank you so much for the constant support so guys as you can see from the title of this video it says how to hatch catfish I'm going to try as much as possible to split the video into parts so as to avoid too much summarization i don't want to summarize and jump pack everything i really want you guys to get the needed information the needed knowledge about each and every step in order to have a successful catfish hatching or catfish production okay so for today we are going to be talking about the first thing which is how to prepare your hatching vat of course you need a containment to put your eggs you know where they are going to hatch so i'm going to show you how to prepare your hatching vat which is going to involve um washing your hatching vat um your spawning net okay your spawning net and also um ensuring that the water is fit for hatching okay so for this aspect we are going to need firstly we are going to need the hatching vat which could be plastic could be concrete or could be of tarpaulin material so the hatching vat is one of the materials needed we are going to need salt to make salt solution for washing every of the materials we are going to use we are going to need salt we are going to need our spawning net okay some people use kakaban kakaban is also fine but we are going to need our spawning net we are going to need a um, um, ph meter that is very key because we'll need to check the what range of the ph of the water if it is fit or not we don't want to put our fishes in the water that is highly acidic so we have to check so as to ensure if we are going to have to buffer it or not okay so we are going to need the ph meter and then lastly we are going to need our buffer and for today we are going to be using soda ash also called sodium carbonate na2co3 so that is what we are going to be using for this whole process today so the next video you are going to be seeing is me of course in the hatchery showing you what and what to do how to prepare your hatching vat how to place your net how to buffer the ph of your water so as to ensure what high productivity so i hope you enjoy this and stay tuned for the next part of the video so welcome back to our main hatchery as you can see we have a plastic vat here i'm sure most of you might not have this type but if you have this type good if it's a concrete vat fine or tackling you're good to go so first off i've already rinsed this out and washed it with salt solution and after that i filled it up with water so now we're going to check the pH of this water because that is one thing that is very important. We have to ensure the water is not acidic and also ensure the alkaline in the water is not too high. So, so basically we have to ensure that the pH is around 6.5 to 7.5 or at most 8. So now we're going to check our pH. Here I have my pH meter and open it like that. It has a button here, put it on, and then 
we dip it into the water to check the pH of the water. So as you can see, it's reading, it's reading, wait for it to get stable. So from the pH meter, it says our pH is around 4.64 to 4.63 or 4 points around that range so and this shows that the pH of this water is very acidic and we can't what, use it so what can we do in a situation like this all you have to do is what buffer the pH of the water when I say buffer it means what increase the pH of the water now initially I said you have to use the water with a pH range of 6.5 to 7.5 or at most 8. So let's try and see if we can actually get 6.5 to 7.5 within that range. So here I have my buffer. This is soda ash. I don't know if you can see it. That is sodium carbonate. So I'm going to add this into the water to buffer the pH. So I'm going to use my spatula so because of course you have to be careful, you can't use your hand. So I'm going to scoop out about three of this. So three. And for this because it's bigger, because it's the same source of water, I'm going to add five. So, three, four, five. Now, what you have to do is mix this up. Please don't use your hand. You can use a bowl like this and just stir up the water so that the solution or the powder, the soda ash, can dissolve it properly. So you mix it like so. You mix it and then you allow it to rest. So let's mix this one as well. You mix it also. So the particles can dissolve properly. After mixing it, we allow it to rest. Then we come back to check the pH of the water. When we check, it should have increased slightly. If it's not still within that range, then you add more till you get it the required pH you want. So that is that. So we're going to come back to check and then we move on to the next. So for the quantity of soda ash to use, use one gram of soda ash to 200 liters of water okay one gram of soda ash to what 200 liters of water when you use one gram is going to increase the ph point by two so assuming you have a water of ph of four okay and the water is 200 liters all you need to do is what add one gram of soda ash and when you add one gram it's going to increase the ph by two that means the ph will now become what six okay so that is the measurement so guys i just wanted to put this out there you can buffer your water directly from your storage tank this is just a demonstration so where you have your storage tank of let's say four thousand liters you can do the buffering right there in the tank okay so i just needed to let that out so let's go back to checking the result of our ph so we are back we are back to check the ph of the water remember we already added soda ash into this water and what we got initially was something around four point five so now that we allow this to rest with the soda ash, let's check it again. So 
actually it is reading as we can see so we have six point nine around six point four six point nine two three so that is what we have and that is perfect and then for this one as well so remember i said we have to have a range of 6.5 to 7.5 or at most 8 so now that we've checked that next thing we have to do is to set your spawning net so this is my net i've already washed it so i'm going to set it on my vats now ensure the spawning net is suspended in between the water it must not touch the base of your vat and the net must not come outside because this is where we are going to put spread our eggs here they are going to rest in here so we are going to do it like this make sure you arrange it well and then I have a clip here on my clip to hold the net in place so after setting it you hold it like this so that your net is in place you hold it as well here and then let's come here and do the same thing here and then here also so that is properly secure now we'll move to the next one we have a bigger net for this one put it like this So this is how you prepare your vat for hatching or for spawning as people would call it. So this is how you prepare it. So watch out for the next thing and I'll see you during the stripping and fertilization process. So guys, if you really enjoyed what you just watched, Please give this video a thumbs up also ensure that you click on the subscribe button and also the notification bell so as to get notified whenever a new video drops now I want you guys to know that this is a series and then we can't just rush everything so it has to what go through steps so this is the first video when it comes to how to hatch catfish this is the first thing you have to do preparing what your hatching vat so the next video you are going to be seeing which is going to come out in a couple of days will be selection of your parent stock or the brood stock as people will call it the male and the female what are the things you have to ensure what are the things you have to take note of and so as to avoid what getting a brood stock that is bad so that is going to be the next video and if you want to watch it like i said it's a series so we just have to follow through and not what jam pack everything okay so that video is going to be coming out like i said in, in a couple of days so in order not to miss out on this series on how to hatch catfish how to hatch your catfish then please click on that notification bell okay click on it then you get notified whenever a new video drops i can't really say how long this whole series is going to go for but i know it's going to be educative so so make sure you stay tuned 
thank you guys so much for the love for the support for everything you know you guys are always showing me massive love and i do not take it for granted so thank you i remain your homegirl she came me olavisi the farm lady mm -hmm. and this bye for now